Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a wonderful privilege to meet you all through this uh, YouTube channel to share God's word with all of you. I would like to meditate from the book 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 30 where we read Elijah repairing a ruined altar. Let me read 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 30. Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. They came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. Here we read God's altar was ruined. It brings us the question that how God's altar could be ruined. It was built for God by the people of God in the promised land. But here we read Elijah came down to repair the altar and he called the people to repair it. Dear friends, due to the sin that Israelites committed, especially King Ahab committed, led to the destruction of God's altar. People lost the right relationship that they were having in the beginning. Since the altar was broken down, it was not used. People could not come together. They were not coming together to worship the Lord. That's a place where they rebuild their relationship with the, their own God. That's a place where they were established in the Lord. But at this point, due to the sin that Ahab committed has led the God's altar to be ruined. But this time I would like to focus on God's plan amidst of all this uh, situation that Israelites were facing. I would like to share about preserved God's plan. God's plan can never be destroyed. That's what we read in the book of Job. Job says in chapter 42 verse 2, he says, I know you can do all things. No plans of yours can be thwarted. So God's plan cannot be demolished or destroyed by any power. But we see here in the chosen land among chosen people the altar of God was destroyed. But that did not stop the plan that God had for the people of Israel. Though the relationship was broken down between God and his own people still God's plan was still there on and God was still having greater plans that he had already prepared for his people. Preserved God's plan. God has a plan for each and every one of us. There is no doubt. God's word clearly says in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. God has greater plans for each and every one of us. Sometimes when our altar of worship, our altar where we know how our relationship with God is broken down sometimes the enemy comes and tells us that whatever the plans that God has for us is no more but the word of God is clearly assuring us that God still remembers the plan that he has for each and every one of us and he will fulfill that plan at the right time that's why Job, even though he went through a lot of pain and suffering and trials, still at the end he could say that, Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plans of yours can be thwarted. Amen. So, uh, what is that plan that God has for his people? God has a greater plan. What is it? If we read First Kings chapter 18, Verses 36 and 37, there we will be able to find out the plans 
that God wanted to renew and restore and preserve for his people amidst of this broken uh, God's altar. What was the plan that God had for the people of Israel? Verse 36 and 37, if you read, we will find out that God who made a plan for his people is still keeping that plan. What was the plan? Verse 36, it says, At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Verse 37, answer me, O Lord, answer me. So these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. The plan that God has for his people is turning the hearts of the people to God, making him known through our life. That is the plan that God has for us. So here Elijah says, Lord, make yourself known at this point through your servant. That was the prayer that Elijah was making. So we, as we read the following passage, we all know that God listened to the prayer of Elijah and he answered and he made himself known through the life of Elijah to the people around him, to the people who never experienced his love and power in their life, especially to the people who were worshipping Baal. Amen. So God's plan for our life is making him known through our life what is the second plan that god has for us in verse 38 this is what we read verse 38 says then the fire of the lord fell and burned up the sacrifice the wood the stones and the soil and also licked up the water in the trench so this is what we see here god you know pouring out his power at that place when um, Elijah prayed and all the people saw this they fell prostrate and cried the Lord he is God the Lord he is God verse 39 we read that so whoever saw God's fire power coming down on this altar they bowed down themselves these people used to bow down before Baal. Now, you know, God made them to bow down before him through the life of Elijah. Second plan that God has for his people is you now turning their heart to God. That is his plan. As I said before, the first and foremost plan that God has for his people is to making him known through our life second turning people's heart to God through our life amen God wants to use of life in a way that is a blessing to others he wants to use your life as a blessing to others people around you people who do not believe in Christ people who have never experienced the love of Christ in their life people who have never experienced the power of God in their life God wants to use your life to touch the people around you third in verse 40 we see that then Elijah commanded them Seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let anyone get away. They seized them and Elijah had them brought down to the Kizon Valley and slaughtered there. The third plan that God has for his children is destroying the enemy's territory through your life. God wants to do something greater, but he, he can do things by himself but he wants to use your life 
to fulfill his plan so the third plan that he has is destroying the enemy's territory through your life that's a plan of god the plan might have been looking like as if it is almost over the plan that god had for your life might not be seeming like coming true but let me encourage you dear friend the moment we surrender our life and ba come back to the presence of the lord as he had worked in the life of elijah he is still able to fulfill the call that he has placed in your life when you were in mother's womb he cho he had chosen you he called you and he made and prepared the plans for your life as the word of god says still i have a plan for you plan to prosper you declares the lord god has greater plans in your life but there are times due to the circumstances due to the life that we have lived which was not pleasing to god you know we might think we have gone away from the plan of god but let me encourage you right now that the same call the same plan that god had in your life when you were in your mother's womb is still on on you and he is still preserving that call for you that plan for you and he is willing to fulfill that call in your life people of god israelites they never bother about this plan but there was one man who was willing to obey to god's plan who was willing to obey god's word and god remembered his plan that he had for his people and he fulfilled it in their life god is still wanting to fulfill the plans that he has for you are you willing to surrender your life obey your obey to god's word and do what god wants you to do he is still working in your life he is still preserving the plan that he had for you may the lord bless you as you hear my word you commit your lives you listen to what god is wanting you to listen you surrender your life to the point where god will work God will renew God will you know preserve that plan that he has already prepared for you may the lord bless you amen